Hello, my name is Todd Gooch, and I welcome you. This is my first video in the video series on the periodic table. <clears throat> in this video, I would like to address the Nobel Committee in Chemistry uh, with my data. In 2000 and 2000 to 2002, about eight years ago, I geometrically constructed the atoms. And while doing that, a geometric proof occurred that I'd like to share with you today. And I'd like to submit it for my Nobel Prize in Chemistry. It's very simple, the data is very simple. Uh, in my prologue video, uh, to this video series, I, I talked about the geometric construction of the bottom of hydrogen. And I'd like to share with you now the top view of hydrogen. Here is the top view of hydrogen. The dark triangle represents the triangular electron phenomena which occurs in this atom. Uh, the prediction is, is that electrons are triangular in shape and it, it, it's my prediction that uh, upcoming DOE photographs at about two and a half times our current standard deviation resolution uh, will, will uncover these triangles on the atoms. So there's a prediction uh, that should come to pass in the near future having to do with the theory but as far as the data goes I'd like to begin now. Uh, it's very simple. Anybody can repeat the data. Uh, here's a ruler. The length of the side of this triangle is 21 millimeters, plus or minus a half a millimeter. As I geometrically constructed as I geometrically constructed the atoms uh, through lithium, uh, beryllium, boron, uh, the organic chemists should love this, uh, carbon, carbon, um, all the way through uh, the second period, through to, to neon, which um, which ultimately describes uh, that period. The uh, the inert gases ultimately describe the uh, the period of the periodic table that you're dealing with. Um, and what you'll notice is is that they they keep an octahedral shape. They kept the same octahedral geometry um, uh, throughout the uh, the first period, second period, and then when you go, uh, it, it became, I, I actually did draw the third period, but uh, it just became a lot easier to represent the periods in the actual geometry uh, through the use of, of representing just the inert, inert gases. They seem to represent the entire period and, and the geometrical work required for me to have actually drawn all 118 elements would have been so time-consuming um, as to as to just be prohibitive, uh, but I was able to do the um, the inert gases. Here's argon. Now, in argon, I'd like to I'd like to again go go into my data that I'm submitting to the to the Nobel Committee right now. Is that um, in the length of the side of the uh, the argon configuration? becomes twice what we just discussed, which is 21, 21 millimeters, when it becomes approximately twice that, 40, 42 plus or minus a half a millimeter, if you get, if you get, you know, it depends on, on how good I was at drawing my straight line and this, that, and the other, but basically, uh, you, you can, you can do this, no problem, there it is, about 42, 42 and a half, at right around that point, 
where the um, where it doubles right at that point what you find is while you're doing the constructions that now your compass won't cover the side anymore you can't you can't get two lengths to cover the side and at this point you're unable to draw this shape anymore you can't draw the octahedral geometry anymore you have to draw something different you have to you have no choice because as I was saying in the prologue videos in order to get rid in order to get rid of the uh, uh, the the gaps the spaces the holes in between um, the spheres when dealing with rigid marbles instead of this permeable spherical geometry um, in order to get rid of those your compass has to cover you can't change the length of your compass either that's in uh, inviolate it's verboten you're not allowed to change the length of your compass I would have to change the length of my compass in order to cover this anymore to make this shape and it exactly and exactly this is my observation exactly that time what you find is a change in the number of electrons on the periodic table from 8 to 18 between between the uh, third period and then to the fourth period this this is a geometric proof that atomic nuclei formation is directly related to the unit length now this this was not enough for me so I continue to draw the atoms I'm skeptical and I just uh, I don't believe things like that right off hand so I continue to draw krypton and then xenon and when you know it xenon what happens is is that if we go all the way back we go all the way back to the original to the original helium hydrogen configuration at the beginning and take the length <coughs> take the length right here of the side of this triangle what you find is, is that it's approximately 16 millimeters plus or minus a half a millimeter when you get to xenon what you find is that if you measure the side again here that it's 32 millimeters twice twice the size and again the same thing is happening you can't cover you can't cover the entire side with just the um, your current size of your compass uh, you would have to again change the size of your compass or change your configuration and it, at exactly that same time on the periodic table what you find is is that the number of electrons goes from 18 to 32 it took me three weeks three weeks I couldn't I couldn't use a compass anymore to actually get the picture for radon I had to do this freehand but I had to change my geometry and and this is the data that I'm submitting to the Nobel Committee atomic nuclei formation is directly related to the unit length or I would not be able to show these observations you would not see observable changes in the number of electrons on the periodic table at exactly the same point in time that I see these these correlations going on where as a geometer you just would have to stop drawing pictures because uh, or you'd have to change the length of your compass one uh, because you no longer can draw that uh, that geometry anymore and um, it's quite obvious when you're actually doing the, uh, the geometry that this is the case uh, my name is Todd Gooch and I'm submitting this data to the Nobel Committee thank you very much for your time